Okay guys, welcome back for the second part of the REW video series on my channel. I know it's been a long time, it's been about three months since I posted how to set up REW step by step. And I had originally planned to give this second video to you much sooner, showing you the results of my measurements and then what to do moving forward from there after you've taken those measurements. However, um, during that time, I did not know that I would be able to purchase seven brand new um, KEF THX in wall loudspeakers. So obviously, uh, if I had put out that content, then it would have been kind of pointless. So I wanted to wait until I got all seven speakers in and installed and recalibrated and set to reference levels before I went ahead and um, re-shot the video. So I got all seven speakers, obviously. They're all installed. They've all been broken in pretty substantially. I've had them installed for a little over a month and a half and I've listened to a lot of music and watched a fair amount of movies and played video games on them. So they're definitely broken in. Um, so that's great. And now it's time for the second part so in this second part, I'm going to be taking you through how to measure each speaker and then I'm um, just kind of talking through that whole process. All right, so let's get started. Now, if you haven't already, go back and watch the part one of how to go about setting up REW on your uh, MacBook. Of course, you can do this on your uh, Windows based laptop as well. The, the setup process menus might be a little bit different, but in all it's going to be the same process. So if you haven't already, go ahead and go watch that video and set it up the way I have it. And then furthermore, before you even uh, start taking measurements, make sure you have a SPL meter that you've set it to C weighting, fast response, um, you've set it to pick up 60 to 90 dB and make sure you've set every single one of the speakers in your system to 75 dB of pink noise with your master volume set at zero. So I have a video on that as well. If you don't know how to do that, go ahead and click the link in the video to watch how to set up your speakers to reference level because you'll need to do that before you take these measurements. Okay, so we're ready to start taking some measurements. We're going to be measuring seven speakers, um, the front left, right, center, surround left, surround right, back surround left, back surround right, and the four Dolby Atmos speakers on the ceiling are not going to be measured at this time. There is no way to um, measure them with this current configuration of REW. If I find a workaround, I will certainly make a video for that. But for now, we're just going to be calibrating all seven speakers, measuring, that is, on the uh, bed layer. So we've already checked levels, and they are good. So we're ready to start measuring the first loudspeaker, and that will be the left. So make sure you're extremely quiet, don't have any people in the room with you, no kids, no animals, nothing. Try to have it as quiet as possible and you don't want to be moving around making any noise when you're taking these measurements. So let's get started. All right, and there's our first measurement. So, I'm going to title this Front Left. And I'll go in and apply one sixth smoothing just to give it, uh, just to help it make a little bit more sense. And then, let's see, hit enter. Okay, and then we're going to go to the front right. I'm 
Okay. One twelfth. I mean, sorry, one sixth smoothing. Again, make sure it's really important that you label these. Otherwise, you're going to forget what uh, measurement you're looking at or what speaker you're looking at. So make sure you label it. Okay. Next one. Center. Right, that is the center. Already looking very similar to each other, so that's good for the front sound stage. Next, we will do surround left. Around right. Now, if it sounds louder in the microphone, uh, that's because um, I have a lapel mic that I'm using to capture this audio, the audio that you are hearing, and the audio um, that the REW is hearing is from obviously the UMIC mic one. The audio you're hearing right now is obviously the lapel. So if one speaker sounds louder than the other, it's because I'm currently sitting on the floor uh, closer to the uh, surround left and surround right. I'm sorry, uh, surround left and back surround left. Okay, next will be the back surround left. Clicking was detected. It's okay. It's only because that uh, speaker is slightly closer to the measurement position. Back, surround, left. And surround, back, right. Looks like those back channels are a little hot. May have to go in and bump down that trim just a little bit. Okay. Two more measurements. The subs. Again, make sure when you're measuring all these speakers that you have your subs turned all the way down because obviously with a surround sound setup, you're usually sending low frequency information to the subs unless you're running uh, crazy large full range loudspeakers, which if those things don't have 12, 15, or 18 inch subwoofers in them, then your surround speakers are not full range. So in most cases, most people are not using uh, truly full range loudspeakers. 
something full range again would be something that has a at least I'd say at least at the bare minimum actually a 15 inch subwoofer 18s would be better so um, these speakers are very very capable but but they are not capable of doing anything in the SPL range you would want for I'd say anything at 50 Hertz and below so obviously that is why you use subwoofers but for that purpose you got to turn them off because you don't want to be measuring two speakers at the same time but now we are ready to measure these subwoofers and because um, most receivers don't have the ability to do independent outputs of the subwoofers you're gonna have to measure one at a time doing the um, volume knob on the back turn off one to where you usually have it and then make sure you keep the other one off and then switch it vice versa when you're measuring the other one so let's go LFE we'll start with the front subwoofer and for measurement purposes again make sure you set your subwoofer to where you normally have it you don't need to adjust it higher or lower okay time to measure the subs now for this part uh, more than likely you're gonna end up clipping when you try to take the measurement so I had to bring this down to negative 37 and then uh, with the frequency response I'm pretty sure these 12s are not going to go down below 15 Hertz and as far as the frequency response in the higher range obviously you're not going to be sending highs to it most people cross over their subs at 80 Hertz or 90 sometimes as high as 120 but in general no one's sending information 200 Hertz or above to it so I'm gonna set mine at 200 and we're gonna take a measurement of the first subwoofer now to measure the second subwoofer so be sure to go to the first one turn it down and then go to the second one and turn the gain back up to where you usually have it for me it's the gain is set to 50 percent Okay, apply smoothing. Don't forget to label. Front sub, back sub. Okay, so that is all seven speakers measured plus the two subwoofers. Now, for a little bit more useful information, say for listening to stereo, when you're listening to music down here, you can do a measurement of both the left and the right, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And then also, uh, with the subwoofers, it is helpful to take a measurement of both subwoofers at the same time, so you can get a more accurate idea of what's actually happening, because one subwoofer, is usually not enough for your typical system especially in a room of this size which is a nice medium size room at 35 feet by 16 feet wide almost eight foot ceilings so i'm going to take a measurement of both subs as well before we break down our measurements so just go back to your first subwoofer and turn it up
okay. And that represents both subs together. And then last but not least, we are going to measure the front left and right. I'm going to set this back to 20,000, 22,000. Set this back to 20. Oops. Left plus right. And again, don't forget to turn off your subwoofers. You don't want those interfering. Check levels real quick. All good. And start measuring. Okay, now we have all the measurements we need. Time to go over and look at the data and compare them and see where we might want to make some corrections in the EQ section of the receiver. In this case, it will be Odyssey Multi EQ XT32 for my Marantz SR7012. Let's first look at the front. And that's um, that's actually pretty decently flat already on its own. These speakers are much better than the Kef towers I had. So everything in my system is crossed over at 80 Hertz. but so we don't really need to pay too much attention to any of the information from this loudspeaker below that, but that's not terrible. Um, 91 Hertz, got a small dip at 148, nothing too crazy. I mean, there's nothing really that overly concerns me. I'm going to apply 112. And you get a little bit better idea of what is going on. Yeah, so actually using uh, 112 smoothing is going to be a lot better. Anything higher than that, it's just it, you can make anything look like it's already really, really smooth and flat. So you want to get a good idea of what your actual frequency response is. So the more information you have, the better. Now, of course, applying no smoothing at all is going to be just way too much to look at. Um, so some smoothing is good, but too much can uh, kind of negate what you're trying to do as far as trying to EQ anything. So looks like we got a dip at 149 for the front left. All these dips are, there's nothing terribly concerning right now. There's nothing that I'm seeing that I'm going to have to really adjust. If anything, I could maybe try to boost up all the frequencies around 1K and up, but 
honestly, there's no real large knolls, nothing I'm terribly concerned about. So that front left looks good. Front right. Also looking good, let's compare it to the front left. Pretty similar, which they should look similar. Not bad. Again, nothing that really terribly concerns me. Center. In comparison. And it would make sense that these graphs would match because not only are they all up front, but they're all identical speakers. It's a proper LCR. Uh, you're going to get better frequency response and you're going to get just better overall um, sound and just a more smooth, cohesive soundstage if all the speakers in your front soundstage are the same. Okay, so let's move on to the surround left. And in comparison, this is now, so my surrounds are a slightly different model, slightly smaller. Up front, you got the THX, um, well, the KEF THX 3160 uh, LCRs. And then for the rest of the speakers, the rear surrounds and the surrounds, those are four of the KEF CI THX 4100. And uh, those are slightly smaller but still very capable in comparing it that's not a terribly bad response either it's actually pretty flat I'm actually really really surprised um, now of course you guys didn't get to see the measurements of my original setup when I had a kind of a mishmash of all different kefs um, because I had the kef IQ 90s as my front left and right previously I had the kef IQ 60 center, the KEF IQ 10s as my rear surrounds, and then the KEF Q300 bookshelves as my side surrounds. So even though it was all KEF and they were all, you know, decently timbre matched, they were all completely different. So I was getting some really, really interesting uh, frequency responses and um, ultimately going with matching speakers. Um, even if you keep it the same brand, it's, it's best to keep the same series. So going with these calf and wall loudspeakers has made um, a tremendous difference. I can already tell that I'm gonna have to do less work in the EQ section compared to my old setup, which consisted of everything I just explained. So this is good. This actually makes it so I don't have to do that much work. So from, looks like there's a little bit of a boost actually at 200 hertz and 294 and then it starts to flatten out. Again, there are real no nulls that I'm terribly concerned about and nulls are just big dips and this is kind of good because I could maybe just dip down this 297 and this 200 hertz region apply a small boost in the 398 or 400 region and have a pretty decently flat frequency response so that's really good that pleases me and then the surround right in comparison pretty similar almost identical except where there's a dip at the 200 hertz for the right surround. There's a boost in the left surround. So again, boost 200 for this one, and maybe drop down the 242 region, but that's not a huge it's not a huge bump up, so already this is looking really good. 
surround back right or left. Okay, so there is some significant dips there I'm gonna have to fix though. At the same time, you can only do so much, so that's pretty significant dip in the 168. I may not be able to fix that that much, and I definitely can't move the speaker, so I may just have to live with that, but we'll see what I can do. It's easier to fix areas that are boosted rather than fixing nulls because those are usually an indication of just problems with the room itself and placement of the speakers. Then we got the 297, so it seems to be a re reoccurring theme here. Anything in the 300 hertz region is slightly boosted in this room. So drop down that a little bit. Other than that, that's pretty flat. I like it. And surround. Back right in comparison is... See, there's a huge difference right there. So the surround back right speaker doesn't have that dip at 160 hertz. But across everywhere else, the frequency response is nearly identical. So again, 300 hertz, gonna have to dip that down a little bit, maybe even 400. Other than that, flatten this section out right here. It's a pretty decent response. I'm pretty happy with that. On to the front subwoofer. Switch that over to 112. Okay, it's already been done. Okay. So from 15 hertz. You know, that's not bad. And that back subwoofer. A little bit lower and then what they both sound like together not bad so there's a dip in the 65 Hertz region should be able to fix that with EQ I might drop down this 45 Hertz region just a little bit other than that Obviously, it starts to roll off at about, well, basically 80 hertz, which then my uh, other speakers take over. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then both the front left and right speakers playing together. Bad. A bit of a boosted section right here at 177. Yeah, overall this is looking really, really good. I'm quite happy with uh, these results. I, I don't have to do much EQing. All right, guys, so that just about wraps up part two of the REW home theater calibration video. So stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to break down those results a little bit more. I'm going to take you into the Odyssey app and start applying some EQ to make some changes, to fix some of those boosted areas, to fix some of the nulls, and just flatten it out just a little bit. I'll explain to you my process and why I'm doing what I'm doing, some of the things you should do, some of the things you shouldn't do, some of the things to look out for, and we'll get this system sounding as great as it possibly can in this room. So stay tuned for that. Please hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when that next video drops. Now changing gears just a little bit, if you guys are familiar with my channel, then you know that I set forth a challenge for you guys. And that challenge is, if you guys help get me to 1,000 subscribers, 
the next video I would post would be a show me your rack video. So I'll take you back to that AV rack, explain what's in it, some of the specs, why I kind of did what I did and chose what I chose, and take you around to the back and explain how I have it hooked up and why I have things done in a certain way because they may be a little bit different than what uh, you would do or what others have done in the past with similar systems. So I'll just give you all the details and some uh, history and stories about each particular set of gear. So if you'd like to see that, please hit the subscribe button if you have not already subscribed. And if you're into home theater and audio videos, please consider hitting the subscribe button and please hit that bell notification so you'll be notified when that next video drops. I really do appreciate you guys. You guys have grown this channel significantly from where it was just even six months ago. And I'm extremely grateful for that. You guys are becoming much more engaging and asking me questions, asking me to do certain videos. And I love the engagement. I love talking to you guys right now. It's easy enough to where I can pretty much respond to everyone who has questions about anything. So that's great. And I'll continue to do that. I love that. I love where this channel is going, so I want to hit the next milestone of 5,000 subscribers, then 10,000, and then just the sky's the limit. And of course, I can't do it without you guys. You guys are what makes this channel. So you guys liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, just interacting with me is encouraging me to make better videos, higher quality, kind of up the production value to put out more videos per month. Um, and if I start really getting that, that to that 5,000 subscriber mark, I'll start you know, putting out two to maybe even three videos per month. So that being said, have a great day and happy listening. Cheers.